Let's get right into it. News of the day that seems to move markets. China might add more stimulus. Germany's talking about for the first time, maybe not so much a surplus in their budget, but maybe writing some big checks, maybe 50 billion euros. Uh, our Federal Reserve talking about lowering rates and the EU in general, September 12th supposed to be a bazooka type meeting. Does this fiscal and monetary stimulus have a price considering we've been using it a lot more than organic growth has been bubbling up? Yeah, Rick, I think it has a price. When you look at global yields and look at how much they've fallen, I think the market is skeptical that all of this can come together in time to get enough organic growth to keep things going in the right direction, that a price might be, uh, might be confidence in the, in the system. You know, many stock markets in the past, like the NASDAQ, almost doubled five months before it crashed. What are investors to do if all of that stimulus is probably going to help stock prices, but maybe there's questions in the macro picture? I think you see it in the price action. People are buying safe havens and equities have done fine, right? So the big move this year has been duration. Uh, safe assets have done really, really well. So I think investors are putting money in places where in case they're wrong, uh, they can get gains and, and the U.S. Treasury market has been a big beneficiary. You know, when I look at the corporate arena, for example, the investment grade, the LQD is virtually at all time highs. The spreads in the securities markets are very tight on investment grade. Why are investors so easily moving into these areas without increased uh, compensation, in your opinion? I think it's all part of a grab for yield and the fact that U.S. growth, where you know, LQD is, is, is U.S. companies, the U.S. growth has been okay. So if you can't find it away from home, uh, you go to the U.S. market, you find safe assets, and we don't expect corporate default rates to go up a lot, so maybe LQD is, is a, a good place to get some extra yield. Do you suspect that Jay Powell and company are going to continue the easing or do you think that was a one off and recent data points uh, will hamper a longer term easing cycle beginning in the near future? Uh, we think they'll keep easing. I, I don't know if they can get ahead of the curve. I'm not sure if the data is where they need it to be to really move as aggressively as the market wants. Uh, but make no mistake about it. The, this is the beginning of, of a number of eases. I think it's a matter of how far they go and how quickly if they fall behind uh, the market, the long end will rally more. You know, it's so easy and knee-jerk to say, ah, inverted curve, everything's going to be recession at some point in the future. When I look at twos to tens curve, putting the three-month aside, it, it definitely is getting flat. What do you think the implications are if it doesn't really have major inversions over a longer period of time? I think the implications are what you said earlier, which is there's just not a big risk to growth and in inflation. So the question is, how long can we muddle through? Uh, I don't think we can do it forever. But the implications are low growth, grab for yields. And if growth stays positive or, or, or you know, at least a little bit above zero, uh, a lot of these assets can do very well. You know, there's always a lot of debate as to why investors seem so enamored during questionable times with gold. Doesn't the fact that interest rates are so low and gold is a sterile commodity, it has negative carry, isn't that a large part of the reason as well? Sure.